Let's do micro front end work in edge side includes. I'll start with what an edge side include is. So here's the Wikipedia page on them. And right here you can see that it's a tag. And now let's kind of visualize that flow from a user request through to the server and then back again. And at some point in there, that edge side include will be replaced with the contents of that URL. Now there's actually a lot more to ESI than just that include tag. The whole spec is actually pretty huge, but I'm just gonna focus on includes. Now before we dig in some more, I just wanna get some terminology out of the way. I'll start with CDN. CDN stands for Content Distribution Network. There are a bunch of them, big companies like Akamai, Amazon's CloudFront, Azure, Rackspace, there's, there's a bunch. And what a CDN does is sit between your server or your static host and the wider internet. In CDN parlance, your server is called origin. And what the CDN does is provide a caching layer at what's called the edge. And you can think of the edge as a bunch of distribution points around the world. Basically, CDN gives you two things. It takes the load off your origin servers because not all requests will go all the way through to the server. And the second thing is speed. Because the CDN is hosting everywhere, it'll be much faster for your customers to get to those assets. A lot less hops for things like JavaScript, bundles, CSS, images, and so on. I'm simplifying, but I hope you get the point. And the key terms here are origin and edge. Origin is you and your servers. Edge is your CDN. So edge side includes are handled by the CDN, normally. Today, I'm going to handle them right here on localhost. All right, so let's start our project with a standard microfe example. This is on GitHub pages. So I'm gonna create a directory and then de-git that project into a directory I'll call origin. Pretty simple page here. You've got your HTML, some CSS, and some images. Now to get this thing up and running, I'm gonna use the Python simple server and put it up on port 8000. So let's have a look. It looks great. So to think about this visually, we have our customer, say Farmer Ted, and he's gonna go directly to our server and then get that response. Now what I wanna do is take the recommendation sections out of it and put it in an edge side include. So I'll cut that and then I'll make a new directory called components and I'll add it in there. And now I'll make that ESI include and I'm gonna point it at port 8050 because that's where the components will be served from. That's another server you know, or you could use S3 but we're just gonna keep three servers running and they're all gonna be on localhost. And as we can see, the recommendations are now gone. So let's create another terminal in VS Code. And now we'll go into components. And this time I'm gonna fire up Python again, but this time on port 8050. And we can see that it's serving. Here's that directory. And then the HTML. Of course, it's all on the style because the, the images aren't resolved because 8050, that server doesn't actually have them. It's the 8000 servers that has them. But once the page is fused together, those will work. So back to our visuals, we now got this 8050 server kind of hanging out in space. So we need something in between the two that will resolve that ESI include tag. And this is gonna be our CDN stand-in proxy server. So first I'll make a proxy directory and then I'll set up Express and the Express HTTP proxy modules. I've looked at a few proxy modules for this YouTube video, but I picked this one because it makes it super easy to use some code in there to alter the response. We have this user res decorator that you can use to tweak the HTML or whatever the asset is. So that's where we're gonna put in our ESI resolver code. So I'll create the server JS. And then set up my proxy. And for the moment, I'm just gonna let everything go through as is. I'll put that on port 3000. Okay, let's check it out. So it looks exactly the same, so that's good. But if we look at the source, it's still got that ESI include reference. So back to our visual, we now have a proxy server between Farmer Ted and our server, but we haven't yet put in that code that gets the ESI include resolved that would get the recommendations HTML from 8050. Next thing I'm gonna do is set up that user res decorator, or user response decorator, I guess. Sure, whatever. And I'm just gonna pass it through. Okay, I haven't broken anything. So now I'm gonna bring in node SI. That's a module that does ESI parsing and also does those requests. So I guess node ESI, kind of they borrowed the E on the end or something, I don't know, whatever. All right, I'll create a new ESI object and let's check out the docs to see how I'm gonna handle this. Okay, so there's this process method and you give it a string and then it gives you back a promise that resolves to the complete HTML. 
And that's good news for us because user res decorator is a promise based API. So we just kind of need to point it at that HTML and it'll return a promise and do the work for us. So now I'm going to use the response headers to make sure that we only apply this to HTML responses. We don't want to go and try and hash up some JPEGs or whatever. All right, let's have a look. Hey, now we have our recommendations back. And you can see it over here in the code. Now I can tweak those just to make sure. And voila, we see some changes. Okay, so our customer makes the request and it goes to our proxy. Our proxy then requests the page from origin. It gets back an HTML response with the ESI include. And then we use that node SI to go off and get the HTML and inject it into the response. And then that goes back to our customer. So the last thing we want to do is show how to make the code in the original page interact with those injected components. So I'll start by creating some code for the buy button. Now what this is going to do is on a click, we'll add one to a cart value and then put it in a custom event on window. And that will say that there's a new cart value. All right, I'll make sure that my code didn't cause any errors. Cool. Now let's head back to the page and extract the basket div into a basket HTML file on our components server. And I'll change the count just to make sure that I'm getting it through the ESI. All right, looks good. So now I'll add some code on the ESI HTML side to look for that event and then update the cart count in the text. All right, this just looks for that custom event and then updates the text using a string template. Will it blend? And it does. Great. Okay, so what I'm trying to get to with this is that you now have something in your toolkit to use edge side includes to not just drop in HTML, but also to have that injected code interact in the page. I used window and custom events here because it was pretty much the cheapest way to get there, but you could use Redux or RxJS or really whatever. Kind of depends on the complexity of the problem and all that, or how far you want to go with your complexity and your solutions, whatever. So why would this be useful? Well, if you're doing a lot of Jamstack stuff and you're generating thousands of pages, that may take some time. But there may be parts of the page that you want to update really frequently. So you could use this ESI system to put placeholders in your Jamstack pages that are then filled up right before they get to the customer with whatever your more frequently updated content is. Another possible example would be like a header and a footer. You could have, you know, a flat HTML header and footer, and you just ESI include it into the page. Cool, right? One more tool in your microFE toolkit. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you learned some cool stuff. Like or subscribe as you please, and be kind to each other.